Hawkeye episode three was entertaining, but a little disappointing. But before I get into my review of this episode, consider this your spoiler warning. If you have not yet seen or caught up with the episodes, consider this your spoiler warning because I will be talking a little bit of spoilerish ish. So you've been warned. So I'm going to try to make this short and quick. I thought the episode was interesting. It had a great action scene in the beginning, which reminded me too much of Fast and the Furious to the point where I was waiting for Hawkeye to say, it's all about family. I don't know why I said it in Batman. I was trying to do it in Vin Diesel, but point being is that it was a nice little action scene. And I appreciate it. It's, it, it's one of the things that Marvel gets right. It's their action scenes, even though people criticize it for how many cuts that it does. And this is no different. They did a pretty sloppy job in the stunt doubles. You could definitely tell when the stunt doubles were used and when the actors were used. And it is what it is. When you have these spy thrillers, these action thriller uh, movies and TV shows, it's kind of hard, especially when you have all this action going on, especially when you're adding a car into it. But I thought they did a respectable job. I did. I thought everyone in it did a good job acting and everything. I was the script is very tight. It's very good. It's very compact. I like the banter again from Haley and and Jeremy Renner. I think they like I said it in my review of episode one and two. I think that they have good chemistry on on screen. So go out and watch it. It's interesting. Now I do believe that in the comic book Echo is the stepdaughter of spider-man's kingpin and also helps uh daredevil and if we are to believe the rumors that daredevil is going to come out in spider-man far from home then this is one of those intertwining moments that we'll look back after we after the 17th of december and be like hey this is why this was for and I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Marvel has done nothing but give us brilliancy in that department. So I, I like the Easter eggs. I like the name dropping and all that stuff. But those for, for those of you that are not familiar, there's a channel that I think it's called Comic Book Explain. Uh, Google that and you'll find more of the backstory on Echo, which she's a pretty dope character. And I understand why Marvel is bringing her in. So the, the actress that is playing Echo, Alakwa Cox, I think she's a great actress. I haven't seen her in anything, but she's done a pretty good job here. Now, I know I'm supposed to suspend my disbelief when I watch Marvel or when I watch any kind of movie. I want I go in there and I dis I dis I, I disconnect from reality, right? I know I'm going to see some fantastical things. I know I'm going to see some things that will be like, "Ha, that's not real, but it's cool," right? And I understand that in the past, Mar Marvel has been criticized for not introducing, you know, what would happen to normal humans and the repercussions and, you know, what happens when heroes, you know, kill a bunch of people with no remorse. And we saw a little bit about that in Civil War. That's where the Accords happen. And now we get introduced. I know after episode one and two, everybody was going crazy. Like, why is Clint have a hearing aid? When was he deaf? And for, not, for all you non- uh, comic book fans, th those are two storylines of hymns that, depending on which, you know, uh, work you're reading, it happened for different reasons. I just thought, I just think it's a good nod to uh, for our soldiers and our police officers and our first responders that have to, that go out and fight in wars or deal with emergencies. This is a real life repercussion is the word that I'm, that I'm going to use. Or, or, or injury that does happen to them because of the, the, the battles of war and the loud bangs and the, the bullets and the explosions. It's one of the more common occurrence between our soldiers uh, in the military that they come back from from soldier, from uh, from battle and from war, they lose their hearing. So I, I commend Marvel for doing that and finally give us a little bit more realistic as to what would happen with just a normal dude with not in an Iron Man suit, not a god, not with super soldier serum, what, what the toll that it takes on his body. Now, hearing loss, obviously hit him fighting with gods and Superman, you would think he would have a little bit more injuries than just a, a hearing loss, but it's a nice nod to our soldiers and first responders. That's why he has the hearing, the hearing aid to resemble that. And the actress that 
is playing Echo, uh, Aqua Fox. She is deaf, like in real life, and she is an amputee in real life. And I, I'm, I'm here for it. Everybody has been on Marvel and, and Kevin Feige about representation and the lack of representation and how he's, you know, what, you know, whitewashes sometime or cast people that are supposed to be like the, the ancient one and how she was supposed to be from Thailand descent. Like she wasn't a Marvel, but they obviously casted a white actress to play that in Dr. Strange. So I, I get it. But I think because they're gonna uh, they're gonna adapt this or uh, this is gonna be, I don't think she's gonna be into like the Spider Man universe. But I definitely think this is gonna be in the in the Daredevil uh, arc to have a blind, a deaf, and an amputee two in one, obviously in uh, Aqua. But honestly, that's not the part that bothers me. I'm all for representation. This is the way Marvel. And Kevin Feige have decided to go. I know a lot of people don't like it. I'm neither here nor there on it. The part that bothers me though is that so so Clint, this is our Clint from phase one, two, and three. He fought Black Widow, which we all know how skilled she is. And he went almost toe-to-toe -to -toe in civil war with black against Black Panther. And I know the character of Echo in the comic book is this skilled, and they try to 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 rush into. Oh, look how great of a fighter she is! Look at how skilled she is! And you know, hats off, they tried. But I'm sorry, Clint has been doing this for way longer, and I know it's not always about age and experience. I know some young bloods come in and and take care of the old blood, and you know the the the, the passing of the torch, as it will. And again. I get it, but when you show me that he's fighting a dude with a vibranium suit, you lose me a little bit. I was like, oh, come on. He should be, he's, he takes out a, a horde. I'm talking about a group of men and women, and, and every, he just kicks all their butts. So, but he has trouble because why? She's so badass. And just, this is just me speaking from, from personal experience. I get that you want to have representation with her. But having her both not only just deaf, but also an amputee. It's like you're just trying too much to say, look, I'm going to give make this this character so have so many drawbacks, but that's we're we're going to show her that she can't stay down, which I think is a great message, right? But I have people that have been amputees and we go to the gym or we go out running and I'm not talking when you, you there's different prosthetics, the ones that you see in the Olympics where they run or sprint or even high jump where they have that special metal that is very, you know, buoyant, if you will, as opposed to just a regular prosthetic. I've had friends that go to the gym and they, it, it falls off. I mean, it's, it's not very mobile. It's not very, you know, you have to get, keep on getting it adjusted because of the way the, the skin or the muscle shrinks in those areas and stuff like that. So I I get it, but I, mean, I get I get that not a lot of people have that experience the way I do. I was just when I saw that episode, I was like, oh come on, just hit the damn fucking leg. It's gonna fall off, and there you have your advantage. Like done, you know. It's not that it's not that big of a deal. But I just thought it was too much. Like I, it, great, she's an amputee. The character of Echo isn't an amputee. You could have just covered up and she could have just been the deaf part. We get it. You could have done in the in promotional and people are going to, kids are going to look up to that. They're going to say like, oh my gosh, she's an amputee. You don't have to keep on putting it in front of the, in front of the screen because all I saw was people to, is she really, is she really an amputee? Is she really? An, and, and the whole thing got lost as opposed to just her being a good actress. You know, I, like you take away from her, from one side of her to acknowledge the other side that, okay, she, we, she, we get it. She's an amputee. She's deaf. But the part is that look at her now. She is in Hollywood starring or, or co-starring in a Marvel property in Hawkeye and Disney Plus. Look at what she overcame and, and how much her, you, then you follow on her story, what she did before Hawkeye and da, da, da. All you do is, do, oh, is she an amputee? And then you Google, is Echo an amputee? And then you have people debating as to why the hell, so you cheapened it. At least in my instance, and, and a lot of people with disabilities don't want that. They don't want to be acknowledged for their disability they want to be acknowledged for what they do with that disability she is a great actress or she's becoming a great actress 
and overcoming her disabilities. And that was, that's what makes a champion or that's what makes a great story when you're like, oh, my gosh, she's such a great actress. You let the, the young girls and, 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 and come up and see, like, oh, my gosh, she's deaf. And not only the deaf boys, young, you know, deaf girls that see someone on screen and representation. Oh, my God, she's deaf. I'm deaf. I could be a great actor. And then you come up and say, oh, my God, then she's an amputee and let that story, that, 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 that groundswell build up to you where you're like, hey, yeah, you know, all this stuff doesn't hold her back, but you're not watering it down by cheapening it, by putting it in and, and, and forcing it into a character that she's portraying that didn't have that disability. So, I, I mean, I don't know. It may, it's just me. But I appreciate the representation, and I hope a lot of young boys, a lot of young girls with hearing loss, with with amputated, you know, limbs, uh, look at her and get great and get inspired to pursue everything and anything they want to do in life. But for, for, for me, when you want me to suspend my disbelief, you lose me again. Maybe I'm coming from a, a unique perspective where I know people with, with amputated limbs, where it's not that easy to move around or to even try to come up with boxing or MMA or anything like that, even though I'm being proven wrong daily. I, I'm always amazed at what the human spirit, the human body can do. But it just seems like it was a little bit too much of, of that being brought in. I mean, we already had about, you know, claim it's just a lot to, to be thrown into it. But again, it's just my opinion. I just think it's a lot being condensed in, the, in basically six episodes. But we'll see what Marvel Marvel uh, has in store. Uh, but I found the episode again. I enjoyed it. I was I was intrigued. I was uh, I was captivated, and I'm interested to see how they how the second half of this show continues. But anyways, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.